Hey what's up everyone, City and Technology News here, and in this video I'm going to be doing my hands-on review of iOS 9, which is Apple's latest operating system for the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. So iOS 9 is a much more stable experience than iOS 8 was when that was first launched, and there are definitely some features here that are genuinely useful. iOS 9 is not a shock in all visual redesign like iOS 7 was two years ago. You might even be hard pressed to tell that it is a new operating system over iOS 8, but there are definitely some upgrades under the hood. One fairly obvious visual change is the fact that Apple's actually added a new font called San Francisco, which is an updated keyboard with distinct uppercase and lowercase characters. It doesn't look anything that different than before, but if you notice a slight change in your lock screen and on your keyboard, that's why. Apple's also redesigned the recent app switcher, which now looks like a cascading fan of cards. It's definitely very pretty, although I do find it slightly more difficult to use than the old method. It seems like it was custom designed for the new iPhone 6S, which lets you jump into multitasking with a hard 3D touch press, but in older phones and iPods, it just seems a little bit less useful than before. With that said, there is actually a new feature in iOS 9 which makes it way easier to bounce between apps without having to jump to the recent apps view or back to your home screen. It's essentially a back button that appears in the upper left hand corner of the screen whenever you're in one app, and then you click a link or notification to go directly to another. Tap that button and boom, you're instantly back in Safari after opening up a YouTube link, or you're back to reading your ebook after checking out a Twitter notification. This is very similar to the back button that Android users have had for years now, but really this is the first time that iOS has had anything like this. Now another feature that really looks like it's been inspired from Android is the new Spotlight Search, which you can actually access by swiping over from the left of the home screen, rather than swiping down like you did in iOS 7 and iOS 8. For instance, if you message a person a lot during a specific time of day, they're probably going to show up as your first contact, and the same goes for apps depending on your usage patterns, the time of day, and your location. This screen is always going to serve up relevant content based on what you're looking for, and it shows various headlines from Apple's new news app as well. It's all designed to make you more efficient with your iPhone. Instead of swiping down from the top of the screen and typing to search for an app, Siri's just going to put it front and center. This is very similar to Google Now on Android devices, but again, that's really not a bad thing because I honestly feel like iOS has gotten behind Android in this area. Now as I just mentioned, Apple's also redesigned the news app in iOS 9. Apple News is a beautiful and fast newsreader with a lot of different sources pumping content into it. It feels a little bit like it's trying to reinvent the RSS wheel, for instance if you already have a go-to app for your news consumption, whether that's the New York Times, an RSS reader, or even Twitter, I'm not exactly sure why you would switch to Apple News. With that said, I am actually a really big fan of the app, I think the interface looks really crisp and modern, and it also makes it really easy to curate exactly what kind of news content you want to see, and from what sources you want it to come from. If you do have a device running iOS 9, I would definitely recommend at least giving the new news app a try, since I think that more publishers are definitely going to get on board with this over time, and the app will only improve as that happens. Now another new app that's definitely been improved in iOS 9 is the new Notes app, which now has support for web links, photos, checklists, and iCloud syncing. Also, you can now make sketches on your notepad for the first time. Whenever you open a new note on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, you'll see a new plus symbol in the lower right of the text. When you tap that, it's going to bring up various options for drawing on your device with a finger or a capacitive stylus. You can use the fine tip marker, the thick and translucent highlighter marker, or the pencil tool to draw out whatever you like. There's even a ruler that takes advantage of iOS's multi-touch technology to let you draw straight lines, and an eraser to clean up any mistakes. There are 24 different colors to choose from, as well as several shades of gray included. Now the two other apps that have really gotten big updates this time around are Passbook and Maps. Passbook is now called Apple Wallet, and is a new icon in iOS 9. The app still runs fairly similarly to before, although it does actually add support for loyalty cards this time around, so you'll be able to start adding rewards cards to your wallet and they'll show up here too. Just like with iOS 8, all you have to do to use the new wallet app is scan some codes into your phone or find some apps that are compatible with Apple Pay. Now with Maps, Apple's updated the app to include transit directions this time around, and it is also a little bit more personalized than before. For instance, when you search for a destination, Apple's going to bring up a number of recommendations, like places to eat, places to drink, things to do, so you can actually find something that you're looking for without having to type it all out if it's one of the things that Apple recommends. But anyways, that's pretty much all the big new changes in iOS 9. Some other upgrades that you should know about are the new low power mode, which basically allows you to get a whole other hour of battery out of your device by turning off some background processes, and then also on the iPad, Apple's added a bunch of things, including split screen multitasking for the first time. 
All in all, I definitely think that iOS 9 is a pretty good upgrade over iOS 8. Apple's building on a strong foundation which they already have with their iOS operating system, and with iOS 9 they're adding some of the features that they were missing out from before that are already on Android and other operating systems. iOS 9 is a pretty good upgrade, and I really can't think of many reasons why you wouldn't want to upgrade if you do have a device that's capable of running the new operating system. But give me your opinions on iOS 9 in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.